over 200 cities, people are coming together to stand up for their communities, their people, and a, and a future for their planet that they can believe in. We're here today to stand in solidarity with them, to demand a fair and just world, not just because climate change is something which affects all of us, but because even here in Cambridge, in our very own town and university, the fossil fuel industry exerts its influence. Hundreds of million pounds Cambridge has invested in fossil fuels. It is absurd that a world-leading institution is simultaneously destroying the planet. It is absurd that an institution claiming to give a great future to young people is simultaneously taking it away from them. It is undemocratic, it is illogical, and it is quite frankly immoral. Climate crisis is more than a loss of wildlife and habitat. It is a humanitarian crisis. It affects every one of us here and people all across the world. Everybody pays the price of our leaders' neglect of the planet, but some groups feel it more than others. If you're from a low-income background or from a minority group in London, you are more likely to be living in a polluted area and suffer the long-term health problems and consequences. If you're a woman living in an area ravaged by climate change, it is likely you who will, have to be the, who will bear the greatest toll, working tirelessly to keep your family together. And if you live in low-lying lands touched by sea rises, you will become a climate refugee, displaced from your home and community. By holding investments in this inhumane industry, Cambridge University is supporting the suffering of all these people and more. It could get worse, and I don't need to spell out the level of destruction climate change could, could bring. But guess what? Here, today, in Cambridge, just like in the US, we are not going to let it happen. <laughs> By coming out here today as a community of students, residents, local politicians, we're saying that yes, actually, we do care. We care for ourselves. We care about one another. We care for our shared future with people all across the world. That's what climate justice is about. We're saying that we're not going to sit by and watch as corporate greed destroys our planet. We're going to stand up for ourselves. We're going to stand up for the 10,000 families who every year in London grieve, grieve over a loved one lost because of air pollution. Stand up for communities in Bangladesh who see the forests they rely upon destroyed to build coal plants. For the indigenous people of Dakota whose land will be polluted by the pipeline for primary school children in the UK, breathing in polluted air, for kids in the States who for years have been drinking water poisoned with lead. We're standing up for them. That's what climate justice is about. <laughs> Later on today, we're going to hear about the momentum, the successes, the victory that the climate movement is having. It is this sort of action, when people come together and stand up to demand change, that is how we will win this campaign. That's how we're going to save the planet and safeguard it for ourselves and future generations. By coming out here today, we are literally, quite literally, giving ourselves a future. So thank you, thank you, thank you for coming out. <laughs> right, next up we have Andrew Catterall, who's president of the Cambridge University Nature Society. He's a busy guy, he's got exams going on, so again, the Shah appreciates you for coming here today. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so yes, thank you very much for inviting me here to speak today. My name's Andrew, I'm the president of Cambridge University Nature Society. Um, so we're a student society interested in the appreciation, enjoyment and understanding of the natural world. We run free trips to local nature reserves and free talks on conservation, natural history and ecology. If you are interested, just look us up on Facebook. Like that, better? Yeah, good. Okay, right. Um, but yes, today I want to speak very briefly about we how, why we support the immediate and unequivocal divestment of the university's funds from fossil fuel companies. So I'm sure you're all aware of the uh, incredibly damaging impacts climate change is having on wildlife around the world. Uh, we, we're all very familiar with how it's imperiling the future of many exotic species, such as polar bears and penguins in the Arctic. But what I think a lot of us are not familiar with is how it's also affecting wildlife here, right on our doorstep here in Cambridgeshire. And I just want to give two very brief examples of this. One of the uh, most, most beautiful and, and frequent signs of spring is if you go to one of our ancient woodlands and you look at the carpets of bluebells covering the floor and other, other wildflowers as well. Now, recently, over the past two decades, as temperatures have, temperatures have risen, we've seen trees coming to leaf about an average two weeks earlier. 
So what's happened is that the bluebells haven't changed their flowering time. They're just getting shaded out. And increasingly, one of nature's most beautiful displays is becoming a thing of the past. The same has happened for wild garlic, yellow archangel, and other wild flowers. And of course, it's having knock-on effects and insects, the pollinators on which we depend. But it's not just there, because these effects cascade up food webs and also affect the synchrony of birds with the food they depend on. So, for example, if you consider the pied flycatcher, um, not one of the most enigmatic bird species, but it makes a massive journey every year around now, all the way from West Africa over to the west side of the UK. It comes here to get food for its young and to breed. But sadly, the temperatures have risen, insects are coming out earlier and earlier. So now when it arrives, there's simply no food for its young, and the nestlings are starving. We've seen numbers down 90% over the last 20 years. This can't continue. But sadly, just as we're seeing that climate change is pushing nature out of synchrony with the climate, we also think here at the Cambridge University Nature Society the University Council is incredibly out of sync with what we know about the current state of the climate. It's incredible not only to ignore a grave passed by the Regent's House, but to show utter contempt for a student movement which has worked through all the official channels and, and, and worked work, work through all the proper democratic means and then to ignore it. We have to stop this and we can't let it go on. So that's why we fully support immediate unequivocal divestment of the University's funds. Thank you very much. And we know that when we work together, we can get institutions like Cambridge University to divest. Since 2010, nearly 200 institutions have divested, and we'll definitely make Cambridge one of them soon. I just wanted to um, talk about that while we can act nationally and internationally and to make change for institutions, we can also act uh, in our own day-to-day -day lives to limit our impact on the planet. Most of you are probably aware of the impact that meat and dairy has on the planet, but maybe not so aware of the dramatic effect that it has. Most of deforestation in the Amazon, 70% of it, is due to uh, animal agriculture. We have 56 billion land animals that we rear in factory farms. We could feed them, and yet we have eight, over 800 billion people who are malnourished in the world today. I, it doesn't make sense that we have so much food for these animals that we rear for ourselves, in the West mostly, and yet we leave these 800 million people to die, uh, be malnourished and many of them die every day of hunger. We can do so much more in our day-to-day -day lives. We can do protests, we can get the university to divest, but we need to realise that in our day-to-day -day lives, everything that we do matters. The food we eat, the clothes we wear, they all matter. And we should really, I just want to, I'm here just to express how much food really, really does make a difference. Um, Meat, uh, it, the meat industry is responsible for almost half of all methane emissions in the world today. And methane causes uh, global warming 23 times to the extent of CO2 emissions. Um, there, there are just so many facts that I could say. I would really encourage you to look up the meat, in, the meat and dairy industries, what they do to our environment, what they do to people in poorer nations because of our meat-rich Western diets. There's, yeah, just look it up. There's lots of information, not only on the environment, also on the ethical side of the animals, <laughs> but also for things? our health. I very much, very strongly encourage you to look into it. You don't have to go vegan like straight away. You can reduce meat, <laughs> not straight away, but hopefully, in the, yeah, soon would be good. Um, vegetarian Sundays, Millis Mondays, everything that you do can make a difference. So yeah, I'm I'm here to just very much encourage that. The Vegan Society does loads of events over the term, so look it up on Facebook. Uh, great, thank you everyone for... Thank you so much for that, William. Um, now we're going to have Rory from Zero Carbon speak briefly about the situation on the investment here at Cambridge. Can you please give him a hand? I realise I'm another white male, and I'm really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but here we've heard a bit about the severity, the gravity of this climate crisis. And we really need to know what we can do here on our doorstep to make a change. 
and I see one injustice right on our doorstep. It's in the building just over there, Senate House. I'm talking about the 370 million pounds this university invests directly in fossil fuel companies. 370 million pounds invested in the climate crisis. We say that's not okay. Here, I want to say the Cambridge University's fossil fuel investments are undemocratic, illogical, and immoral. And I'd like to tell you why. These investments are undemocratic. 2,190 students voted, signed a petition to divest. Cambridge Student Union voted overwhelmingly in favour of divestment. But most of all, the university's decision-making body, Regent House, which is made up of all the academics in university, passed a motion saying the university must divest, but yet they do not. We say this is undemocratic. We say this is illogical. Their reasons for not divesting were claiming their fiduciary duty. This means their legal duty to manage the investment responsibly and sensibly. We say investing in fossil fuel is not a sensible decision. That means in 18 years, climate will start to fulfill itself. It will be irrevocable. It will lead to unimaginable catastrophe. This means that if we're to avoid that catastrophe, at some point very, very soon, governments are going to have to say, no more burning fossil fuels. And when they say that, the fossil fuel reserves upon which these companies' value is based, all their fossil fuels they've got in the ground that they own, they can't be burned, they're worthless. The value of these companies will tumble shareholders will stampede away. This is not a financial decision that is sensible in any way at all. And you contrast that to investing in green energy. The sector is booming and it's in line with this university's stated commitment to sustainability. We say this university investments in fossil fuels are undemocratic and illogical. We also say they're immoral. What does it mean they're making a profit from the people that are dying, from homes that are being flooded, from crops that are failing, from famine? Climate change causes displacement, it causes poverty, it causes war. And by investing in all of that, by investing in fossil fuel companies, this university is telling the world that they think that's okay. We say it is not okay. We say these investments are immoral. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay. So it's really great to have been invited here today because if there's one thing I've learned from working in Amnesty is that allies are incredibly important. We have an amazing set of student societies, but each one of us is not that big. So we have to consider how we can all work together to get these kind of motions through. Um, for me, like, from Amnesty, the thing I really want to drive home is that human rights and climate change are not different things. Woo! Climate change is human rights because everything that happens now to everyone in the world will be impacted by climate change. And if you think about the right to privacy, you know, people are being displaced, having to live in refugee camps. If you think about the right to, dis um, to no discrimination, you know, the people who are overwhelmingly affected are people who are poor, women, and people who don't have rights in their countries, minorities. So, and finally, obviously the right to life, you know, this is the ultimate thing we're fighting for, is the right for all of us to remain living on this planet. Woo! So, please, please, what I'm saying to you guys is like, think about how we can connect the language of human rights that has built up since 1949, since the Declaration of Human Rights, quite a powerful movement around the world. When you talk about human rights, people know what you're talking about. So, it's really important that we all get together and say, actually, climate change is crucial to our right to life and we want to protect that and this time what Amnesty is doing is working with the Women's Environmental Network which is an amazing charity that's looking at gender discrimination within the climate movement and the fact that a lot of the stuff that we've been doing at the moment is not targeting people who are really being hurt which are women because women are normally responsible for agriculture they're responsible for looking after their families and those are the people who are really struggling now so what I'd ask you all to do is obviously keep in touch with us, sign any petitions that we put out. We're going to be working full term with Zero Carbon. And also please, please donate to Women's Environmental Network. They're an amazing charity. Thank you very much.
and nor of it inevitable. But something that is created by humans. Something that, like that, that can be changed by humans. So we have the opportunity to stand here today and say, do we here in Cambridge want to be fueling this injustice, this inequality, and this unsustainability? Or do we want something different? What do we say today, Cambridge? <laughs>